This video will discuss the American College of Surgeons Commission on Cancer Accreditation Standard 5.8, which deals with lung resection. This slide demonstrates standards 5.3 through 5.8, but this video will focus on standard 5.8. This standard will be documented in the pathology report, specifically within the CAP synoptic report. This represents a brief overview of standard 5.8 which states that any curative intent lung resection done for a primary pulmonary malignancy should include resection of nodes from at least three distinct mediastinal nodal stations and at least one hilar nodal station. Examination of these nodal stations must be documented in the synoptic pathology report, with names and or numbers of the stations clearly documented. This standard should be implemented in 2021. Compliance with this standard will be checked during the 2022 site visit with an expectation for 70% compliance. We will now go through each aspect of this standard in greater detail. First, we will discuss the components of a compliant operation. To reiterate, this standard requires resection of nodes from at least three distinct mediastinal stations, stations two through nine, and at least one hilar nodal station, station 10 through 14, for all curative intent pulmonary resections, including non-anatomic parenchymal sparing resections. This study from 2017 examined the effect of standard compliant lung resection on survival. Specifically, this study looked at the effect of complying with NCCN guidelines requiring one, an anatomic resection, two, negative margins, three, examination of hilar or intrapulmonary lymph nodes, and four, examination of at least three mediastinal lymph nodes. As you can see, compliance with these standards had a significant effect on survival with an impressive hazard ratio of 0.64. A similar study looked at the effect of examining mediastinal lymph nodes and showed a significant improvement in lung cancer-specific survival when mediastinal nodes were examined. The new standard for each section of pulmonary cancers is based on this and other data. These illustrations demonstrate the lymph node stations that are being referenced in this standard. Mediastinal lymph node stations include stations 2 through 9, and the standard requires sampling of nodes from at least three distinct mediastinal stations. Hilar stations include stations 10 through 14, and the standard requires resection of nodes from at least one of these hilar stations. It is important to note that nodes assessed via needle biopsy, such as during an endobronchial ultrasound or EBUS, will not count towards the standard and should be removed at the time of surgery for additional confirmation of benign versus malignant pathology. Additionally, nodes sampled via surgical biopsy, such as during mediastinoscopy, must be included in the final pathology report from the curative intent operation in order to count towards the requirement for this standard. If surgeons desire to count these nodes sampled during mediastinoscopy as part of their final nodal assessment, they must communicate with their pathologist to ensure these nodes are included on the final pathology report from curative intent operation. The next key element to discuss is standard compliant documentation. For proper documentation, nodal stations examined by the pathologist must be documented in any curative intent pulmonary section in the pathology reports in a synoptic format. Additionally, nodal stations must be named and or numbered, and this must be documented in the pathology report. This is an example of a CAP synoptic report from a lung resection. The key section is blown up here. The number of nodes involved must be documented, and the pathologist must specify which nodal stations are involved. Additionally, and importantly for compliance with the standard, the CAP synopsis must specify which lymph node stations are examined. In order to be compliant with the standard, this section must include at least three mediastinal lymph node stations and at least one hilar station. Finally, we will discuss the timeline for compliance with the standard. Here you see the timeline for standard 5.8. As of 2021, centers should be measuring compliance within their own institution using synoptic pathology reports, assuring a compliance level of 70%. Starting in 2022, site visits will review 2021 pathology reports for 70% compliance. In 2023 and 2024, the expected measure of compliance will increase to 80%. To summarize standard 5.8, for any curative intent pulmonary resection for a primary pulmonary malignancy, resection must include lymph nodes from at least three mediastinal lymph node stations and at least one hilar lymph node station. Documentation must specify the names and or numbers of the stations examined and must be included in the CAP synoptic report. 
Implementation of this standard should start now in 2021 with a requirement for 70% compliance when the 2021 pathology reports are reviewed at the 2022 site visit. We will now discuss strategies to optimize compliance with this standard. The ultimate goal to comply with this standard is that each institution is utilizing standardized CAP reports for documentation for all curative intent pulmonary resections. However, in order for the pathologist to do their part in documenting the lymph node assessment, surgeons must first do their part. This includes first documenting curative intent in the operative report, and also labeling nodal stations clearly and separately during performance of the pulmonary resection. Ultimately, while compliance is measured using the pathology report, this standard requires good communication between surgeons, pathologists, and registrars to ensure compliance. One major aspect of compliance with this standard is that lymph node stations must be analyzed separately by the pathologist. In order for this to happen, the surgeon must send each lymph node station separately. We therefore highly encourage the use of separate specimen containers for each lymph node station. In this example, we will simulate a curative intent resection of a right-sided lung cancer. Four lymph node stations will be sampled, three mediastinal and one hyalur, and each station will be sent to pathology separately. First, station 4R is sampled. It is then placed in a specimen cup clearly labeled station 4R. Next, station 7 is sampled, and again placed in its own specimen cup clearly labeled station 7. The same process is repeated for station 9R, and finally for one Hyler station, in this case station 11R, again with its own specimen cup. Four nodal stations have been sampled as required by the standard three mediastinal and one hyalur, and each station is in its own specimen container. At this point, four separate lymph node specimens are sent to the lab, clearly labeled for the pathologist to examine. Of note, this can be accomplished by dissecting each lymph node station separately, or by resecting everything in block and separating the lymph node stations on the back table. The strategy of using pre-labeled specimen collection kits and checklists to improve communication between the surgeon and pathologist has been studied in the paper cited here. Outcomes measured included overall performance of mediastinal lymph node examination. In this study, the median number of mediastinal lymph nodes examined increased from 1 to 6. Additionally, this study looked at concordance in surgeons and pathologists reporting of lymph node stations examined. This improved from 39% to 80% with the use of pre-labeled specimen collection kits and checklists. In order to improve compliance with standard 5.8, we highly recommend the use of pre-labeled separate specimen containers for each lymph node station that will be examined. In addition to these strategies to be utilized in the operating room, we encourage communication between pathologists, surgeons, and registrars, and each institution to determine their own pathway to ensure the following. Adequate nodal sampling during surgery. Proper pathologic evaluation of separate lymph node stations that are sampled. Correct documentation of which nodal basins were sampled and examined. And correct data capture by registrars. Again, this will require communication between all three parties involved. In summary, to improve compliance with standard 5.8, surgeons must first document curative intent for appropriate pulmonary resections. They must also label nodal stations clearly and separately during the performance of pulmonary resection. Institutions must encourage communication among surgeons, pathologists, and registrars around this standard. These steps will allow the pathologist to properly document their findings using the standardized CAP reports. These strategies will increase compliance with standard 5.8 but more importantly, will ultimately improve outcomes for patients undergoing curative surgery for pulmonary malignancy. For more information, please visit our website at facs.org/cssp. Thank you for your time and attention.